We live moment by moment. Some moments wash over you and then they're gone. Others are like a second skin. My moment of meeting Maya was one of those. Like a second skin, it covered me, protected me, inspired me over the years. When I thought that things hadn't gone the way I thought they should, or I felt shamed or doubted by others, or maybe I had feelings of feeling insignificant, I remember meeting Maya. When I was a young entrepreneur, known for being the Stanford lawyer who became a successful clothing designer, I was invited to speak on a panel of notable black women in Palo Alto, California. I was thrilled and excited to be recognized for my achievements. As I entered the auditorium that afternoon, my heart was pounding with nervous excitement as I walked on stage. You see, I was sitting on a panel with Maya Angelou. Now, as they led us single file on stage, Maya and I were separated by just a few feet and a couple of other panelists. I remember the topic was something motivational. Heck, it was motivational, just breathing in the same rare air as the American Poet Laureate and being considered in the same great company. At that time, I was asked to speak quite often around the San Francisco Bay Area. But this time was different. Not so much for what was said on stage, but because of the conversation that Maya and I had off stage. As we exited the stage that afternoon, she surprised me by turning around and looking me straight in the eye and saying in her deep, melodious voice, Remember, you have been bought and paid for. All those many years ago when the ships crossed the seas and brought us here, you survived. Many thousands died. You come from the best of the best. You don't have anything to prove. Honey, you are the best. Don't you forget that. I was stunned. I had been singled out for a personal message by this beloved cultural icon. I stood there wanting to take it all in to understand the meaning of her words. And as she walked away, she turned and looked at me and said, you are so beautiful. And this time she turned and walked off into the crowd. With that one startling statement, you have been bought and paid for, Maya Angelou gave me, a young, professional, accomplished black woman, the rarest gift. She validated my experience as a valued member of the human race. Over time, I would come to realize that her words were meant to reassure me that I didn't need to prove myself or my self-worth, that I was enough. As a young black person entering the workforce in America, you're schooled in a very unique set of career mantras. The words are meant to tell you all the extra things you'll need to do to succeed You'll have to be two chess moves ahead of your colleagues. You can't take that situation at face value. There's always the other agenda. You're going to have to work twice as hard as everyone else to get ahead. These were the common beliefs that were passed down by the parents of my generation. Maya Angelou, with her words, was preaching a new religion. She was shattering those limiting beliefs. She was saying, right now, right here, in this moment, 
as you are, you are enough. With her words, Maya Angelou took the greatest atrocity perpetuated on my ancestors and transformed it into a birthright of invisible privilege. She crushed those ideas of oppression and victimhood and opened my heart to the largeness of my being. The words, you have been bought and paid for, came to mean something not to be ashamed of, but more of a resolved rite of passage. I had value. Why not? The economic largesse, wealth, and power of America is linked to its legacy of enslavement. With Maya's words, I imagined that what she was saying was that my dreams and I could move to the head of the line. It was a command to take my turn. I no longer felt that I had to apologize for my Ivy League school education or the corporate leadership positions I held or the success of my business coaching. I had value. I had been bought and paid for. I owned my sense of self-worth established by a historical trick of fate. In that moment, Maya Angelou gave me the greatest gift, a vision for my purpose, I, that I couldn't hold back my own gifts of empowering others to achieve, that I belonged on that stage with her, motivating the masses to discover their greatness. She told me that I am enough. And when the world is dark, or life seems unfair, or I feel that I have been judged unjustly. I remember her words, and I know that I am enough. And so are you. <laughs>